Hi everyone, I'm Dan Keynes and today I'm going to be giving you a very quick basic tutorial on Red Cine X Pro. And the reason I'm going to do this is it seems like there are a lot of people who have a few questions about Red Cine X Pro and uh, because the Scarlet's coming out there's going to be a lot more people working with red footage so I just wanted to give something back to the community and uh, hopefully it helps you out. So here's the program. First we're going to go up to the uh, preferences setting and check your preferences here and in here you'll notice that there's a setting called master RMD directory and what this folder does is it contains all of your RMD files which are metadata that you can change with your footage so that's something really convenient to know where you have it because these settings uh, can travel with your footage if you change something and that way you can have a seamless uh, transition from your first light to post-production so what I'm going to go in here do and, and do is uh, change my directory and you can see that on my desktop I have a folder called plates here from something that I did in October so I'll go in here and I've already created a folder called master RMDs and uh, you know you can create your own folder per role or per project depending on how you like to work with the footage um, but because I only have one role for this particular set of plates I've made a subfolder there uh, that will contain all the RMDs for this particular project. So I'll go ahead and select that and choose it. And that's just a little tip that will help uh, seamlessly work with your RMD files. So after I've go ahead and after I've gone ahead and set that, I can go ahead and hit OK. And we can go over here and uh, I've created a folder on my desktop, particularly for this, uh, that has those plates in it called October 21st plates. So I'll go ahead and click on that because that folder contains uh, my roll, my mag that I downloaded using my red SSD card reader uh, onto the desktop in this case. Normally you're going to want to make two redundant backups on different drives of everything you do at minimum. Um, but you know really it's up to you. That's, uh, that's part of your own particular workflow so I'll let you guys decide. So over here we're in the browser view and what this will do is let you browse through different folders and find clips and you can change your settings right now I've got it in list mode here you can see you can also put it in thumbnail here and that'll let you look through different thumbnails and stuff so I'll go ahead and put it back in list view and there's another uh, viewing tab here called browser plus project and what this will let you do is view your um, file browser area as well as your project area with your bins or you can go to just a project view here and just view your bins and a bin is a convenient way of categorizing uh, your footage whether you want to do it by roll number or by project um, I typically like to do it by roll number so what we'll do is go down here to project one and we can rename that or actually I'm sorry we can go down here to project one and what we'll do is create a new bin in there for you. So it'll come up with bin 01 when we right click or control click in here. You can create a new bin. You could also use command B uh, if you prefer using keyboard shortcuts. And once we've done that, you can rename the bin by right clicking on it and going down to rename. And we'll just call this roll A1. And we've named it roll A1. And then next we can take our footage and put it in there. And you can either do that individually by selecting a clip and dragging it down to the bin like that. Or you can go over here to the roll and you could drag the whole folder down and throw that in there. And there we go. So what we've got is a fully populated uh, bin with all the footage that was in that folder. And now that we've done that, we could start looking at our clips. And the easiest way to do that would be to double click on a clip. And that'll bring it up in our viewing window here. And so you have our viewer and you have our histogram. 
up here. And you also have our waveform. And these are just different ways of allowing you to view uh, the properties of what it is that you've shot. So this is a way of, of viewing exposure. Waveform is another great way of viewing exposure. We can talk about that more in depth on uh, another tutorial later on. But um, you can see we have a nice clip here of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. And over here, we can drag the playhead through the clip and view the clip that way and select the keyframe. And uh, the controls here, you can also set an endpoint, an out point. Uh, you can take a screenshot of your, uh, of your scene, and that'll create a TIFF. And over here is the R3D screenshot, which will give you a raw um, R3D screenshot that you can share with friends or with anyone in post-production and show them uh, an idea of something you've done with correction but still leave it uh, completely gradable. So it's just a frame grab and it's nice and small compared to a TIFF, but you still have the flexibility of a raw workflow. So I won't get into too much detail about coloring. That will leave that for a future, um, future tutorial. But over here you have your look preset window and you can create looks uh, using this tool here. And uh, here's your, your color space setting, your gamma setting. Um, default on the Epic is red color 2 and red gamma 2. But if you prefer to work with a flatter image to start, you could select red color 2 and red log film, for instance. Um, if you're trying to match a red 1, you could set it to red color, because that's the typical viewing space on a red 1. And uh, red gamma 1 instead of red gamma 2. That'll give you a steeper curve, um, more contrast out of camera. But the great thing about the RED system is that everything's metadata. So we can really grade this to our heart's delight and end up with something that we're happy with. And uh, another nice setting that we have up here is the debayer quality. You could view something in 16th quality, 8th quality, quarter quality, half, and full. And uh, since I'm on a computer that doesn't have a red rocket in it at the moment, we want to leave that uh, to a fairly low quality in order to achieve real-time playback. But you can see how blocky it looks. You know, This is just for a general reference point. But if we pause it and we take our quality up to full, give it a second, and uh, we should be able to see quite an increase in quality there. It hasn't quite refreshed yet, so let's give it a second. There we go. So now we're in full quality. You can see how much uh, more detail is there in the picture. And uh, let's see, what do we want to do next? Next, I could probably show you a few different controls you have over here besides the basic color and gamma space settings. We'll go back to where I was, which was red color 2 and red gamma 2. You have your white balance, including Kelvin and tent adjustment. Your ISO FLET, which is a great way of adjusting micro contrast. Uh, shadow, dynamic range extension. Saturation, contrast, brightness, exposure. Red, green, and blue direct channel control. Uh, we've got sharpness, denoise, and detail. I usually don't mess with those at all. Um, curve, you can see that I dragged the curve down in luminance a little bit in the knee section here. And uh, that'll just, you know, when I gave this, this plate to some people, they wanted a very flat look, but still retaining um, quality and detail. So I just want to drag it down a little bit so that there's a little more shadow and uh, not quite so flat. But uh, yeah, that's pretty nice. And we also have the um, color wheels here for lift, gamma, and gain for your shadows, midtones, and highlights. And you can also adjust the curve this way uh, with direct control over lift, gamma, and gain by moving this slider around uh, respectively for the different channels there. And let's see what else we got here. 
Um, that just gives you a basic idea, you know, of different controls that you have. Oh, what's this? The look effects. This is something new that's in Red Cine X Pro uh, since version 5, which came out last week. And uh, you've got the Alchemy Group, which is um, a set of plugins that really gives you some more interesting creative controls. Um, Alchemy, which is another way of adjusting your micro contrast. And you can see what that does, uh, particularly in the waveform up here, as I change it. It expands and compresses the waveform in a different way than some of the other tools have in the past. So I'll leave that up for you guys to play with um, to achieve the kind of desired look. We'll probably go into some more creative grading controls uh, in the future, so we can go over that. But uh, another cool thing that you have in Red Cine X Pro is Film Look. It actually has a uh, new grain simulator plugin. So you can add film grain to your heart's desire. Um, I honestly haven't played with that too much because it's so new. And I haven't had that much time, but it is pretty cool. Um, so the next thing I'm going to want to do is probably show you some export settings. And uh, with that, we can go up here to Window and select Export. And that will bring up the Export window here. So over here, we've got uh, Export Settings. And you can see that I've already created one called ProRes 4442K. Now, just for the sake of argument, we'll create a new one. And we'll do that by hitting the plus button and that pops up our export settings window and uh, the first thing we'll want to do is set our format and today we'll probably pick uh, ProRes because a lot of people seem to want ProRes and uh, it's so easy to work with for most people using a Mac workflow for post so we'll go down to QuickTime select QuickTime and we'll check our debayer settings over here and I always do full debayer because I'm a quality freak uh, I don't care about any less than full quality, but that's just me. I'm nuts. So we'll leave those set to full. And here's our output resolution, 1920 by 1080. Um, I shot this particular set of plates in Quad HD or 4K HD as they call it, um, which is exactly, exactly twice the height and twice the width of a 1920 by 1080 high definition television uh, frame format or 1.78 aspect ratio. Uh, next thing we're going to want to do is go into setup and in here we can actually set our uh, codec that we're going to use within QuickTime. So we're inside QuickTime export settings we'll go to video setup give it a second to load and you can select your compression type here. Uh, you can see there's a lot of different compression formats available because I have a lot of different codec packs installed. But I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, the classic ProRes 422 Vanilla, just for the sake of argument today. And on frames a second, we don't want 12. We want 2398, since that's what I shot. So I'll select that. There is a frame rate override uh, that's in the previous window. But sometimes I'll just you know double check everything that I'm doing for the sake of certainty. And in gamma correction, I turn it off of automatic. And what that, that will do is prevent it from making any adjustment to the gamma settings that you've created for that particular clip. So we'll go ahead and turn that to none. And leave these other things unchecked in this particular instance. Lots of advanced settings if you need to mess with them. But for basic dailies or something of that nature, we'll leave it like it is. So go ahead and hit OK and check everything again. Go ahead and hit OK. And we'll go up here to the preset name and we'll name it Apple ProRes 422 16 by 9. OK. And so we've created that and we'll go ahead and hit OK. And you'll see that a new uh, export setting popped up here. So that's pretty cool. And uh, that's great stuff, right? So now that we have an export setting, we can go ahead and pick a file to export. So 
Now that we've created our export setting, we can go over here to export, and down here there's a selection tool. You can export the entire bin that you're selecting. You can export the clip in the viewer. You can export uh, selected clips. You have lots of different options of what you want to export. So for this particular instance, we will select the clip in the viewer because we're just testing it out right now and learning our way around. So I'm going to go ahead and hit export on the clip in viewer and just click that. And you'll see that uh, it'll ask us where we want to put it and an output file name. So in this case, what I'm going to do is select the drop down here. I'm going to go to my plates directory and I've created a folder already called render. But just for the sake of argument, I'll create another one called new render. And go ahead and create that there. Select that. And we can name the file. I'm going to keep it with the same name as the original clip. Go ahead and hit save. And it'll start exporting. And you can, he you can see the uh, export status over here. It gives an ETA on about how long it's going to take the clip to export and status and you can pause that uh, over here if you need to do that cancel it clear it um, it's going to take a little while because this laptop that i'm using to record this is not exactly screaming fast like my other system uh, but it does get the job done so that's a quick basic tutorial on uh, setting up your red cine x pro uh, playing with the color correction settings a little bit and creating your first export. Uh, future uh, tutorials that we'll do will address creative color correction and other things that you can do to enhance your workflow and make your life easier. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful and I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. Also, be sure to look out for my DaVinci Resolve Lite tutorial that's going to be coming soon. Um, another program that seems a little bit daunting at first but once you get the hang of setting it up, just like we did today, uh, you'll find yourself really loving it. And there's so much creative control that you can have over your footage now. So hope you guys are having a great day. And we'll see you on the next tutorial. Take care. Bye-bye.